The online cycling behemoth Zwift just launched its first smart trainer, the Zwift Hub. This is a big deal for a few reasons, including the price. At $499, it is roughly half the cost of direct drive smart trainers from its competitors. In this video, I will tell you the key details of the Zwift Hub, tell you what it feels like to ride the thing, how it stacks up to other smart trainers on the market, and tell you what this could mean for you and for Zwift going forward. So briefly, what's a smart trainer? It is a device that connects to your bike that has two-way communication between an online software game like Zwift and you. So it controls the resistance both to mimic the hills, uphills, downhills, drafts of a virtual environment like Zwift or to follow along on a power-based workout. And it goes the other way, measuring your power to drive your avatar or drive those workouts. If you're watching this video, you probably already knew that, but if you're new to this weird world, welcome. It is fun. Also, if you're watching this, you probably already know that smart trainers are expensive. The proverbial gold standard is the Wahoo Kicker at 1200 bucks. The Tax Neo 2T costs a whopping $1,400 with all the bells and whistles, including a LED laser light show that goes on underneath. The most comparable models to the Zwift Hub are something like the Kicker Core, which is still you know, $900, or the Elite Dorito XR, which is at 949 bucks. So again, with Zwift coming out with this hub at 499, including the cassette of your choice, this is a substantial savings on the rest of the market. Of course, there are wheel on smart trainers that are cheaper. Those look like a traditional trainer where you leave your wheel on the bike and you clamp the roller up against the wheel. Those are nowhere near as good is the short answer there in terms of measurement or ride feel. So for the smart trainer market, the direct drive is really what you want. And of course, you can ride on Zwift without a smart trainer. You could use rollers and have a power meter or use a so-called dumb trainer, but then you're just missing out on the whole interactivity, which is the magic of the game. And yes, there are also other online cycling alternatives to Zwift, but Zwift is the 800 pound gorilla. The stats are just nuts at this point. 3.37 billion miles collectively logged in the game since it launched in 2014. There's been a peak of 47,000 users concurrently in the game at one time. There are more than a thousand weekly races and more than 3,000 weekly events. 74 million workouts have been logged and on and on and on. In short, there are a lot of us in this game. I'm a believer certainly in the fall and winter months and for group racing with the WTRL series, something I love to do with my boys at Stages Cycling. I've tested a number of models from the dumb to the smart rollers to the smart bikes and done individual and group reviews on Bike Radar and on Bella News. So that's just a bit of context as we dive into the specifics of this 499 Zwift Hub. Let's do some numbers and some context before we jump into the ride feel portion of the video. Thing like most smart trainers is heavy. It's a 33 pound unit, 15 kilos, and has a 4.7 kilogram flywheel. For comparison, the Kicker Core has got a you know, 5.4 kilo flywheel. The Kicker itself, uh, the main one, has a seven and a half kilo flywheel. The Neo 2T has no flywheel. So typically the common wisdom is a bigger, heavier flywheel equates to a better ride feel. The point of having the flywheel is to replicate the inertia of riding outside, both in the resistance to the initial acceleration, just like when you're riding outside, you can't just spin your biggest gear with no resistance immediately. It takes a while to get it going. So that's part of what the flywheel seeks to replicate. Also, once up to speed, the flywheel tries to replicate that momentum you have going. So you can, as the tax has shown, get away with not having a flywheel, but that costs a lot more is the long and short of it. Accuracy is a claim 2.5% plus or minus. This is in the ballpark of many power meters that will claim you know, roughly 2%. Some of the top end smart trainers like the Wahoo Kicker now claims you know, plus or minus 1%. The Zwift Hub has a 1800 watt maximum. Good luck maxing that out inside. It also has a 16% maximum replicated 
grade. Yeah, there are a couple spots that get steeper than that, but most people don't ride their trainer on the full 100% setting in Zwift anyhow. So for me, that's not necessarily a deal breaker. If you've been looking around at smart trainers to buy, or perhaps you've got one of these in your house already, you may note that this new Zwift hub looks quite similar to a Jet Black. And that is because it basically is a Jet Black with two little tweaks. It's manufactured by the company Jet Black, which has a Volt out for $1,200. The changes here is the Bluetooth box at the top of the trainer is slightly smaller to allow for greater compatibility. And there's a slightly different modified speed sensor internally. This of course begs the question, why the heck would you buy a Jet Black Volt for 1200 bucks when you can get this thing for $500? I am willing to bet that Jet Black is betting it will sell far more trainers to Zwift than it would sell on its own and thus why it went in with Zwift on this deal. But you don't care about the business side of this, right? You just want to know, is this a good trainer to buy? What does it feel like to ride? Well, I'll tell you. So I had about an hour on this thing, not a whole lot of time, but some time to run through a short series of tests at Zwift headquarters in Long Beach, California. For starters, the thing is rigid and rock solid. Now this is generally a good thing, right? You don't want your trainer walking around as you're doing sprints or just standing up to climb. So it is, it is a super solid thing. One thing we have seen in top end smart trainers recently is a bit of flex in the otherwise firmly planted trainer. The idea being that when you ride a bike outside, you don't sit perfectly at 90 degrees from the ground. There is some lateral movement, uh, which does a few things, but one thing that it definitely does is makes for a more comfortable ride and that it's not putting a single point of friction <laughs> on the saddle. So that's a potential downside of sorts with having a trainer that doesn't move at all, but that is a, a smaller piece and the bigger piece is that it is a solid unit. Stability aside, the trainer feels pretty good to ride. The acceleration feels similar to a Wahoo Kicker or the Elite Dorito XR. It's relatively quiet. Uh, once you're up to speed, uh, it stays seemingly at speed and spins down at a rate you would expect. I didn't get a chance to test it extensively in very short workouts like you know 2020s or Tabata something like this where there's a big swing in the resistance. Zwift says it tested that extensively. It has you know, more than 500 people working on the product side in the UK. Uh, that effort is headed up by a man named Steve Perry. Steve said his team, in addition to running durability tests with machines 24 seven, also tested the Jet Black made trainer through a variety of more challenging workouts and found it to be on par with the best trainers on the market. Have to test that out later when I get one for long-term testing in later, but for the time, we'll just have to take old Steve at his word. Now, why does Zwift have more than 50 people working on a trainer that already effectively exists? To me, this says Zwift has more up its sleeve coming down the road in the future. What that is, of course, they're not talking about it, but I expect to see more than just this one single smart trainer in the future. There are no bells and whistles here. There's no laser light show like you get on the Tax Neo 2T. As I mentioned, there's no built-in side to side for that extra bit of comfort. There's no surface treatments like on the Tax Neo 2T where riding across cobbles or bricks, you get some vibration. It's just designed to be a utilitarian, straightforward and relatively cost friendly version of a direct drive smart trainer. In my short testing, it seems to have checked all those boxes. So what does this all mean? Well, big picture, again, I'm curious to see what Zwift will be doing down the road. Up to this point, the game has relied on third-party manufacturers for its interaction. So you're either riding a Wahoo or an Elite or a Tax or something like this. You've never ridden a Zwift product to participate in Zwift. So this is a big change there. And I'm sure that this entrance into the market will cause annoyance, at least, for those other manufacturers. Could this bring the price down for those other manufacturers as they look to stay competitive? Quite possibly, and that of course could be a good thing for us. 
Now, if you've been following Swift, you probably remember that they had hired a number of hardware engineers and it looked like they were going to be making their own smart trainer and smart bike. And then this May, they laid off a number of folks and announced, hey, we're no longer going to be pursuing the smart trainer thing. That turned out to be a bit of a slight. Now, what will Zwift be doing in the future in terms of hardware? Your guess is as good as mine. But in the meantime, a $500 direct drive smart trainer that comes with your cassette of choice is a screaming deal. I don't see anybody throwing away their Wahoo Kicker or their Tax Neo 2T in favor of buying this. But for the folks who've been held off by price, this is a pretty good option to get you into the game with full interactivity and minimal fuss. When I get a trainer in for testing, I will do so against the number of power meters and will post a review here. But in the meantime, I'm Ben Delaney and I thank you for watching.